Okay, so the next exercise that we're going to look at is how we can evaluate surface geometry. And this really gets into some of the topics that we were just, just reviewing in the question and answer session. Um, if we have a surface, right, uh, we know that we can evaluate it once, right, and we can extract uh, U and V curve, uh, U and V isocurves. We can get the point that's in the world at that intersection as well as the frame that is tangent to both of those isocurves. We can get the normal vector, right? And all of these um, things that we can extract by evaluating a surface allow us to, um, to actually understand the surface a little bit more in terms of its character, right? So if I look at um, the, the curvature of profile C, which is the red curve, and the green curve here, right? By understanding the curvature of those two curves at this location, I can get a sense of how curvy my surface is, right? And how curvy a surface is is a really great way to uh, understand, like, let's say, how, how, build, how well it is suitable for buildability, right? Um, can we build it, right? If we're trying to use material that's based in sheets, right, maybe we have to, um, we have to rethink it or the sheets have to be able to bend in one direction, or uh, maybe we're going to be using concrete and we can actually make some curvy forms. Right? But in, in any case, we're looking at the properties of the surface to understand more about that surface. So again, we can talk about curvature. We can also talk about orientation, right? The normal vector is the vector that is perpendicular to the frame at that UV coordinate. And a vector is just an abstract data type that describes direction and magnitude, right? So here we have a representation of a vector, and we can see that um, we have a direction, which is along the, the orange arrow, and the magnitude can be extracted from uh, the length of that, that vector, right, that is going between uh, the origin, 0, 0, 0, 2.10, 0.43, 9.88, 10.55. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to look at actually visualizing in the viewport how curvy our surfaces are after we've divided them uh, from uh, the previous exercise, right? So the two things we're going to be looking at are trying to find a numerical indication of how curvy our surface is or each one of our isotrim surfaces are, and uh, how we might represent that in the viewport. All right. And um, curvature, when we're talking about uh, surfaces, um, can be defined as either uh, through mean, a mean calculation or a Gaussian calculation. And this allows us to understand if the surface is um, positive, if it has positive curvature in U and V, or uh, negative curvature in one direction but positive in the other, or straight and positive curvature, right? And um, here you can kind of get a sense of what the different options are in terms of how a surface is curving. Is it uh, positive in one direction and negative in another, which is called a saddle shape, or is it uh, positive and positive in both directions, meaning a dome shape. Okay, so this is where we're going to go. We're going to uh, evaluate each one of our surfaces uh, that we've created from the isotrim. We're going to find the normal vector, which we could use to relate some sort of orientation uh, evaluation to. And we're going to uh, look at uh, creating a custom preview of the isotrim surfaces relative to how curvy they are. All right. So let's go back to our grasshopper file. And again, I can keep going from this. Um, so I'm going to say this is a working file. Just to give you a hint of where we're going, we're doing now exercise 1-3. All right, so this is where we just ended. We're going to do this collection of objects next. All right, so there's about 10 objects there for us to work with. Okay. So I'm going to go back to the file we were working with before, and we'll keep building from this one. So I'm going to do save as, 
Say this as 1-3 working. All right. So the goal here is that we want to evaluate each one of these isotrim surfaces at the UV coordinate that's at the relative center. Okay, now this should be pretty familiar because we evaluated surfaces before. All right, so uh, the way we did that before was under surface analysis, we got the evaluate surface object. This asks for the surface and the UV input. And uh, we did two uh, different ways to create our UV coordinate. The first was the multidimensional slider, right? And the second was to define a specific UV coordinate by uh, creating a point by X, Y, Z, right? Now, in this case, uh, the input that we're going to be using here, we always want it to be at 0 0.5, 0 0.5. So we'll, we'll look at a third way to actually define the uh, UV coordinate that's different from this. Right? So I'll, I'll delete these things, and I'm just going to type it in uh, into a panel and sort of hard code it. So it's always 0 0.5, 0 0.5. All right, so um, I'm going to grab a panel from Pram's input. All right, and I'm going to double-click it. And inside the panel, we're going to specify the coordinate we want. So I'm going to open my curly brackets, type in 0 0.5, comma, 0 0.5, comma, 0, close curly brackets, and that's going to be uh, my UV coordinate at 0 0.5, 0 0.5. Okay. Connect that up. And now let's connect our ISO trim into our S input. All right, now something funky happened. We have a bunch of points that are down here, and they're not at each one of the centers of my uh, subsurfaces. Can anyone tell me what I forgot to do? You got it. Reparameterize. All right, now, um, I'm going to go ahead and re do it the same way we did before, which is to go to Geometry, Surface, and grab a Surface Container. We connect this up, right-click, say Reparameterize, and we can connect it through. But I just want to make sure that uh, I note for you that any Surface Input, S here, or Surface Output, S here, you can do that locally there as well, reparameterize. I prefer to do it this way so it's very clear to me that I've done it, right? And especially when um, we're discussing these types of techniques, it's good for us to have an indication uh, across the projector or webinar presentation in this case uh, as a note to reparameterize. Okay, perfect. Now we got our kind of um, UV coordinate evaluation at every one of these panel locations. Right? And as we uh, looked at before, our evaluate surface object has a point which is at the UV coordinate but is in the XYZ world space, a normal vector, and a frame which is our plane. All right, so let's first visualize the normal vectors. All right, so if we go to the vector tab under vector preview, there's the vector display. And we can drop this in and use the points and the normals to draw the vectors that are perpendicular to our surface at that UV coordinate. All right, so you can see that they start tilting as you go from the kind of peak down to the valley, as well as in this axis, as you go down to the valley, they start uh, pointing inward. All right, so that's an indication of which way the, uh, the isotrimmed surface is pointing, right? Which way it's oriented. So if you wanted to, at this point, you could start to compare these vectors to a solar vector or something and get an understanding of what's happening on your surface relative to that. 
but we're going to look at the properties that are internal to the surface still. All right, so um, let's look at how we can evaluate the curvature at each one of these panels. Or I guess let's be consistent and call them isotrim surfaces. All right, so if we go to the surface analysis tab, um, down here there are some additional ways to um, evaluate the surface for its curvature. So let's use the one with the uh, kind of cyan to purple gradient, the surface curvature object. And this asks for the surface to evaluate and the UV coordinate. So this is just going to take in the exact same inputs. All right, so I'm going to drop a panel in, and we'll see here that this gives us again the frame at that location. It gives us the Gaussian curvature and the mean curvature. All right, now these are just two different ways to calculate the curvature of a surface uh, numerically, right? Gaussian and mean. So the calculation is slightly different. And uh, the numbers that you get might be kind of wacky, right? And it may not correspond to anything that's very intuitive. So what we're going to do is um, we're going to take those values and we're going to use color as a way to indicate kind of a relative uh, more or less curvy uh, isotrim. Right? So the first thing to note is that when we look at Gaussian or mean curvature, in both cases, some of our values are negative. Right? So that has to do with the kind of specific um, curvature of each surface. Is it positive in both directions? And if so, how do we calculate that? So for our purposes, we're just going to use, uh, use the values as they are first, and then we'll look at um, actually taking the absolute value of each one of these values so we can understand generally curvature across the collection of subsurfaces. All right, so um, let's go ahead and uh, look at how we might uh, specify color in terms of the preview. And this is going to be done through the custom preview object, which is under vector color, custom preview. This allows us to specify geometry and a specific shader, or at the very least, a specific color swatch. Um, that the object should be previewed as in the viewport. Okay, so somehow I need to go from these numbers from the Gaussian curvature to color. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to kind of build backwards. We're going to use a gradient object as a way to um, indicate color or translating num numbers to color. So that's under params input gradient. And the way this works is it takes in the lower value, the upper value that should be mapped along this line, and the, and the value to actually sample the color from. All right, so what I'm going to do is, um, first of all, edit my uh, gradient. So I'm going to right-click and choose a different preset. I'm going to use this one down here, which is a good uh, collection of colors from red to blue. So if a value is closer to L0, it's going to be red. And if it's closer to L1, which is the max, it will be more blue. Okay, so this assumes that um, those two values are 0 and 1. But that's not necessarily what we're getting here. So what we want to do is we want to find out what the minimum and maximum is for the Gaussian curvature as it comes out. So the way we're going to do that... Um, and by the way, this is surface, surface curvature object. The way we're going to do that is we're going to go back to our math domain tab. And we have one set of values. So we're going to use the bounds object as a way to actually find out what the minimum and maximum is from a single list of values. So if I plug my Gaussian curvature in here, this tells me that the values returned are between negative 0.04 and 0.05. Okay. Now, now the trick is I want to, from my bounds object, 
be able to specify that that first value should go into L0 and the second value should go into L1. So I need to take my domain, my one-dimensional domain apart, so that those two inputs can be specified from here. So under math, domain, domain components, you see the icon, it takes the domain and gives you the two values that define it. Plug that in. My start and my end are going to go in here, and my value is going to come back from the surface curvature. So my Gaussian curvature value is going to sample the gradient. All right, so let's take a second to make sure that all of our objects are labeled. This is domain components. This is my gradient object. Back here was my evaluate surface. And here is my custom preview. All right. So now, these are going to be my colors uh, that I want to preview my geometry with. And my original reparameterized subsurfaces are going to be my geometry. So we'll turn the preview off here. And now I see my vectors and my surface, each one with a unique color describing how curvy it is, right? So the more curvy it is, the... Uh, the more it's going to be in the minimum. The flatter it is, it's going to... Okay, so in this case, because we didn't use absolute value, the minimum and maximum values are both describing a curvature, like high degrees of curvature. In the middle is where things are more uh, consistent, right? So um, first thing to do might be to look at how we can kind of uh, amplify the visual effect of what we see here so it's a little bit clearer. So I'll turn my preview of my vectors off, and if I zoom into my gradient, I can drag these grips off the gradient object to remove them. Okay, so now I have um, control over this a little bit in a more simple fashion. So red means there's negative curvature, blue means there's positive curvature, and yellow means it's mostly flat, All right? So this tells me that the areas of curvature are kind of at these two shoulders here, in the depth of the valleys here, here, and here, and then along this ridge as, it, as the surface goes back up along here. All right, so this is a way to understand curvature relative to both positive and negative curvature, and that has to do with, um, looking back at our PowerPoint, um, the combination of the curvature in two directions. Because remember that if this is the location of our UV coordinate for sampling, positive and negative curvature are going to be understood in both directions, right? So in case A, there's zero curvature and zero curvature, that's flat. In case B, we have um, zero curvature in this direction, and non-zero curvature in the green direction, which ind indicates that there is curvature, so that would result in a cylinder if you went all the way around. Positive and positive, so this is concave relative to looking from the inside of the surface, or convex looking from the outside of the surface. So positive and positive, or in this case here D, Positive is the green arrow, and uh, the orange is negative, which is concave relative to the outside of the surface, right? So in either case, the Gaussian and mean curvature give us a single value that is an indicator of both conditions at the same time. So if you get negative curvature, that's going to be these guys here, right? That means that one direction 
is convex, and the other direction is either convex or flat. Similarly here, we have on the blue, these are both positive. This is giving us positive curvature. Okay. Another way to understand that, which might be a little bit easier, not to understand if it's positive or negative curvature, but just to understand if it's curvy or not. So let's go back in here and let's make a modification to our file right here, right after the service curvature object. And let's just specify that all of our values should be positive. So we'll go to the math operators tab and choose absolute. Take our Gaussian curvature in there and we'll replace the values coming out. Right? So here it's a little bit easier to understand. Um, red is flat, blue is more curvy, and yellow is in between. So I can kind of uh, increase the collection of values a little bit more. So it's a little bit more clear. So this tells us red is really is uh, almost flat. Yellow is uh, kind of intermediate, and blue is going to be very curvy. Okay. So now we've evaluated our surface geometry to understand a little bit more about its properties. Are there any questions uh, on this before we move on? Feel free to drop them in the question window. Okay, so there were some questions about uh, the gradients, right? How do you control the gradients? So this object is under development now. It's got a, some bugs. But the basics are that uh, these are grips, right? And you can slide the grip along the this kind of x-axis of the gradient, right? And that changes the gradient and how it's then correspondingly sampled. If you want to add a color, you can drag from the color wheel onto the gradient. And if you don't like a color, you can drag it off of the gradient and it will essentially delete it. Right? And if you want to change the specific color that's here, in this view, you can double click the grip and this gives you the option to change the color specified there and there. Okay, good questions. All right, if there are any other questions, we'll, uh, we'll carry forward. Okay, so